This was all I was seeing in my head while I tried to sleep that night. It was impossible to wind down and rest, despite complete exhaustion. And with nothing left in the tank, we ended up camping in the middle of a rough trail, hoping the morning would bring an easier day. Bit of a rough day yesterday. Pushed it a little too hard and ended up in a tight spot. At the end of the day, we had to do a recovery and we had to drive through a pretty sketchy section of the trail. So we ended up just camping at the flattest spot we could find, which was not very flat. <laughs> the good news is it looks like there's a, there's a wreck site just around the bend. And, and then we still got about 83 kilometers before we get out of here. So. Last night I didn't sleep a whole lot. I had a lot to think about after uh, we did the recovery on Teddy's truck. He was pretty concerned about the whole situation. You know, this is the, the first time I've led a trip this big and I really want to be... I don't want to let everyone down as, as a leader or a friend, right? So... Um, I do have to make sure that everyone's safe and as much as I want to do a trip like this and a trail like this, it's not worth it at the end of the day if somebody gets hurt or, you know, wrecks their truck. Yeah, it's just what's on my mind. I appreciate Braun and Teddy for taking on this adventure with me. And I'm going to make sure we get through this trail safe. What a piss off, eh? We drove like five more minutes. <laughs> so how are you feeling after uh, last night's events? I mean, I, I don't expect the rest of the trail to be like that. I mean, I can't imagine it getting much worse than that. That was the sketchiest thing I've seen. This was like 25 degrees. Like sustained, 25 degrees. You looked at the degrees? Yeah. Man. <laughs> I that right off. <laughs> I don't mind the uh, the wood chopping and the distance and the long days, but it's the uh, almost dying part that tr stresses me out. <laughs> After a good breakfast and a rest, we all decided we wanted to just get back on the trail and keep pushing. There was no point resting and dwelling on the previous day. On the trail about five minutes, got our first tree. This one's not too bad. It's kind of just uh, walking as height-wise. Trail's definitely eaten a few trucks. We've come across quite a few abandoned on the side of the road. I guess back in the day, you know, if they broke down, it's a long way to get out of here or to come back to fix. So a lot of people just left them. I mean, now we got satellite communications and all sorts of technology to help us out if we get in trouble. Things are different. Arriving at a swamp crossing, I mark a waypoint on our route in Onyx before we head across. Water crossing. It 
It's at times like this on this trail, when you're not exactly sure that you're going the right way and pushing through muddy water, where you really feel like an explorer on an adventure. We've got about an hour of daylight left, boys. Less than seven kilometers to camp. <laughs> this is the old bridge is? Yep. Oh yeah, you can see the old bridge right there. Not driving across that, that's for sure. A pretty clear track next to the bridge shows us where to cross the river, and we make our way through without issue. right now we've been cutting trees all day we're all exhausted we thought we we're gonna make it to camp before dark and now the trail opens right up for us so there's hope this looks like it's heading towards the lake perfect from my map it looks like we can get right down to water from here gone through all the mud yet I'm in it right now it's on my Alright guys, we made it to Sacha Lake. Sacha? T-S-A-C-H? I don't know. We made it to the lake. It was a long, long day of cutting wood, plowing trees, but uh, this is going to be our home for uh, the next 24 hours or so. We're going to spend the day here tomorrow and uh, enjoy the lake. Probably take a swim, wash off, get some of the grime and grease off. What a day. What a day. We didn't make it before sundown though. That means so, you owe me 20 bucks. I owe you 20 bucks. But I already owed you 20 bucks. So we were even? So Steven? We're, we're even. We're gonna have to have another wager tomorrow or something. Yep. I bet we wake up before. No, I'm not ready to bet yet. I just won. I'm gonna enjoy my victory. <laughs> or something drinking from the lake right out here just a couple of minutes ago looking at our trucks tells a story of what we've been through to get to this point point. 
Teddy is working on reattaching a fender. So Brian is having a problem with one of his wheel bearings. He headed back to see a local rancher we ran into on the way in, see if he could help him out with repairs. You think it'll be all right? I don't know. We're going to bring pretty good. And he also said that we'll be there for a lot longer than we think, cutting from the next lake to the next lake. He said it's really bad. There's a road out to Nazco, it's 110 kilometers away. Do you feel okay about continuing on? or? I don't know if we can do it, man. I don't know if we have enough manpower and sauce. We got tons of food. I don't have enough beverage. That's we, sure. we got tons of water. We've got refrigerators. We got tons of water. We got lots of stuff. He said he wouldn't risk it, and he said it's going to take too long the next section to cut. It's 50 kilometers to get out. We know that there's an exit here if we have to turn back. Yeah. I'd like to keep, keep going and try. I feel like... Uh, by the looks of my gear food, we can open my back room right now. Doesn't look like a good idea to me. Service airbag system. Service airbag system. My sway bar light is blinking. Can't turn on the radio. Maybe that's why this was beeping. It wasn't enough volts. See, now it's not turning on. You killed your battery by leaving your radio on, maybe. Do we have jumper cables? I don't. I don't either. All right, so right now we're trying to get Teddy's battery. Charged up a little bit using some makeshift jumper cables. It'll work out. It'll all work out. Front said so. <laughs> Mac on three. One, two, three. Mac. Mac. So Bron and I are on this old logging route. Looks like it's not on the map. I'm trying to find a way to a main road to get back to town to get parts. The road's a bit rougher than uh, we're hoping, so hopefully it smooths out soon and we can make some good time to get to town and get back to Teddy. I can't even hold the camera. <laughs> we make good time getting to the parts store and get back to camp before dark. Then Braun gets to work on the repairs. Oh, easy, easy, easy. I'm surprised brake pads are gone too. Why is it all the time? I just changed them. <laughs> that's half the inner race. Well, that's the full inner race broken in half, and that's half the outer race. Half the outer race is still in here. How's that even happen? Alexander McKenzie Trail, I guess. This is what that bearing was supposed to look like. <laughs> it's a lot different than uh, what it was, eh? Yeah. <laughs> that evening, we're treated to a spectacular sunset over the lake as we prepare ourselves to carry on traveling the Grease Trail. We make final preparations to head out. You know what you probably need? If you're gone for two weeks, you might need a shower. What do you got? This thing here uh, is basically a portable shower slash cleaning dishes, whatever you want unit. When you're gone for a couple of weeks, I'm thinking this thing could be an absolute game changer for you. All right, I'm sold. Bring me up. <laughs> we'll take it. I like to be clean. This portable heated shower from Geyser is just the thing I needed to clean up after a few days on the trail. Got your ears on. Radio check. Your tailgate's still open. Well, I suck, don't I? 
looks like an inch deep. Yeah, the road should curve to the right up ahead somewhere. You can go left or right here. Right. Sacha Lake Airport, please make sure your tray tables and seat backs are in upright position and prepare for takeoff. Are we trying to hit takeoff speed? Oh yeah. Yeah. Driving down the airstrip, it felt good to be back on the trail. Having overcome some major problems, we're ready to finish this thing. All right, we are back on the Mackenzie. Just went through Sacha Lake airstrip and we're going to get right back into the thick of it here. This is becoming my uh, least favorite sight in the world. How many kilometers is the goal for today? Well, I think it's 15 or 14 to Pan Phillips Lodge. So, I mean, if we can do that, that would be money. Looks like we got a water crossing right here. Big, small, what do we got? Hello Creek, that's about 15 feet wide and no road on the other side. Just a sec, consulting map. map says the trail kind of like veers to the right a little bit. Forge ahead. Where's the trail? Yo, you went past it there, Teddy. We are almost halfway from camp to the ranch, or to the lodge. Prime moose habitat, holy. Yeah, no doubt. We've passed the end of the lake, yeah? We have passed the end of the lake. You see here, this was our camp at Sacha Lake. We've made it this far today. My chainsaw fell. What do you mean it fell? It's not there. You lost your chainsaw? It must have fallen out of the back. I didn't see it. Hey, Bron. Teddy lost his chainsaw somewhere. It fell out of the back of his truck. I didn't see it. Hopefully I didn't run over it. Oh no, I got it. We're gonna be making our way down towards water level. Weird. It's like one of those old, like you remember you had the horse and then the people would like yeah. back there? Yeah, that's what it looks like. We are two kilometers from Penn Phillips. That's an airstrip. Yes, it is. All right, 
we just stopped in at the Pan Phillips Ranch. We met Rob and Linda who live there, run the run the ranch, and uh, asked them where would be a good place for us to camp. Uh, they said about six kilometers down the trail, across the river, there's a pretty good spot. So we're gonna try for that. They also told us that the rest of the trail is completely cleared of fallen trees all the way out to the road. So that is extremely exciting news because now we kind of have like an idea of how long it's gonna take us to get out of here. All right, so about six kilometers and across the river. Just past Pan Phillips, a bad thunderstorm has moved in on us. Whoa, that was close. That was close, man. Yes, I don't like that at all. You're gonna hit the ground just over here, dude. I do not want to be under this cloud. That's crazy. Go towards the light. I was right there. We're moving as quickly as possible to get out of this area, as lightning is striking the ground all around us and very close. One at a time, dude. Barely got out of that storm. You can still see like thunder and lightning behind us. The thunder is pretty non-stop and there's some some of the craziest, biggest lightning I've ever seen. I don't really get that down where we live. Yeah, we found this old uh, abandoned homestead here and I think we're gonna post up here for the night and hopefully the storm stays away from us. How's the mosquitoes? Bad. And I'm not keep rolling down my window. But I have to. My fender is off. My rack is bent. Hey Teddy, your rack's bent. <laughs> Teddy destroyed his awning by backing into a tree. It was really funny, but not for him. With the storm beginning to calm, we settled in for our last night on the Alexander McKenzie Trail. Sleep last night, Teddy. Horrible. How did you sleep last night? Horrible. But it was it was I've never been in a thunderstorm like that before. Hours and hours of like lightning strikes, then boom, then then me unzipping the window to see if anything was on fire because I was stressed it out. <laughs> but it's beautiful out this morning. And a little luck. Today's the day we finished the Alexander McKenzie Grease Trail. No deadfall to worry about today. It's pretty smooth sailing for most of the morning. So just when we thought we were home free getting out of here, the trail is completely overgrown with deadfall again. There's a road down to the Elgic Lodge. We're gonna go down there and see if we can get some information. Uh, we were told that the road's clear all the way out. So I have a suspicion that there's another way out of the lodge that'll, that'll take us past this thing. We met uh, Aaron and uh, his wife here, Jennifer, and uh, they're gonna give us some directions on how to get out. And the natives down there don't want people passing through, so we're gonna be respectful of that and uh, find another way out. So how cold does it get here in the winter? Minus 51 we had. Minus 51. Oh, wow. My chickens all survived. No heated coop. Wow. That's wow. And you came in this way. Yeah. So you're going to go go down to the end, cross the lake, or the end of the lake here. Uh, you're going to follow a trail that heads off in this direction. And uh, you're just going to see a little trail that jaunts off to your right. And That's the one with the sign. And there's going to be a little sign. And it's the only trail that jaunts off to the right. 
big enough for your uh, jeeps to go on. You know, you'll you'll have a bit of a trail to follow. Okay. And it'll just keep taking you out until you're in the in the, the major cuts on the other side where the roads are more prominent and. Um, you're golden. All right, very lucky that we came down here and uh, checked out the situation, got the lowdown. So essentially the last 20 kilometers of the trail actual are not uh, recommended to travel. Uh, so we're gonna loop back and go around the other side of the lake, which will take us out to Anaheim. Same old street with the same old sound. We'll find out Heading out of the Mackenzie, I had a big smile on my face. This has been the biggest trip of my life, and one that I've wanted to complete for so long. And we had a blast doing it. If there's a will, then there's a way. I know that we can never Alright guys, we made it to the end of the Alexander Mackenzie Trail. Woo! We're on a dirt road here, just making our way back to uh, the town of Anaheim Lake, if that's a town. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just a lake. Tired, sick of bouncing around. Completed the trail, good. I feel victorious. I feel like I need some new fenders and an awning. And like a lumberjack. Like a lumberjack. <laughs> and like a lumberjack. We did it. Mac on three. One, two, three. Ryan just rolled up in the uh, Volvo C303. Smoke's actually gotten so bad now that it's hard to see. 